for the first time clean running water on the farm. How you going guys? Today I'm just going to do some work on the uh, the pump shed here. You probably remember I put this little pad at the back of the shed where the water tank is. This is for a uh, the pump to be housed in pump and the water filtration system. So we're putting a whole house filtration system in there. The one I've purchased, which I've got already, just don't have it here with me today. It's got three three stage filter and then an ozone filter. So it's four stages uh, of filtration and that'll filter all water going to the house. Ideally, I wouldn't filter the water that's going to the toilet. It just seems like a massive waste of the filter lifespan. But to do it any other way, I'd have to have a second pump that would pump water just to the toilet. That'd be a second pump, a second water line going to the house. So I'm not going to bother. Uh, so it's one, one line running to the house. All water will be filtered. I'm also going to put in a T so that I can run my other cheap pump that I've got here. If I do want to pump any water from the tank for something that just does not need filtering. We've got the dam water as well that we've got um, plumbed all around the farm. This tank is going to overflow very soon. Uh, we only have one wet season and it almost filled it and that's just off the shed. So 100 square meters of roof has almost given me 108,000 liters of water, which is brilliant. What I'll probably do is pump a bit of water out of there just into this top dam. I'll go and grab the shed. I have put the shed together. It's just a little thing they call the lawn locker. Um, so it's, you know, probably about 1.8 metres high, about 1.7 wide and about 800 mil uh, deep, just with a single door. Uh, I've got a higher one just so I can stand up in there and change filters and all the rest of it. I will make a stand for the filtration system to be mounted on as well. I'm going to use some sleepers because I love using sleepers for stuff and I've got them here so I'll make that up later. The plumber will be here in a couple of days just to finish hooking up. This is the, the water pipe that will go to the house. Um, he's put a copper tracer wire, I don't know if you can see it on there, but he's put a copper tracer wire. So if we are looking for it underground, we can find it easy. I'll go and grab the shed. I haven't put the door on it yet. It's only a small shed, probably weighs about 35 kilos. So I'm just gonna carry it out here and uh, put it in place and I'll get it screwed down. We're meant to be getting a lot of rain starting in about an hour or two um, and then going for the next few days. So I wanna get this in and I'm gonna seal around the bottom as well just so we don't get water going in underneath the bottom. So I'll go and grab that now. I made it the same color as the shed, which is woodland gray or slate gray, whatever you want to call it. So here it is. The original plan for this, I was going to be putting a small water tank here so all the water would come in, would drop into like, a, it was a 300 litre water tank, which I've actually got. It'd go into there so that it'd catch, you know, the main sediment and everything and then would overflow into the main tank. I don't have enough fall from the house to here. I needed to get enough fall to cope with any storm surge. And then I needed enough fall from the tank to this tank to cope with any surge as well. So it worked out. I was gonna have about hundred millimeters from the house to here, to the top of the tank. And that would give me about 150 mil into there, which just wasn't enough. It's about a 280 square meter roof plus 100 square meters here. So it's almost 400 square meters of roof. If we had a decent storm, a decent downpour, there's no way that that would handle it. So we decided not. That first flush um, tank won't happen. We will be running in, when we run the storm water from the house, um, we'll run the, the pipe down past here and have it so I can unscrew it. So, you know, the first, decent rain we get in the rainy season. I can just let it flush through, then cap it off, and then it'll fill up. So remember, we're putting a charged system in here. That's why I've got the pump shed now. So I'm just gonna work out where I wanna put this. Just trying to work out the best scenario. That'll be able to run up and into there. We'll leave the gap at the back there because I don't, I could have put it right up against the shed, but then we'll get leaves and crap down in behind. I didn't want that. So I've decided to leave it out uh, from the wall and I will be running electrical through from the shed into here and I'll put some metal conduit in between uh, just so it protects the wires there. Uh, and I will have the electrician do that. I'll get this post out of the way and chop this off soon as well. So I reckon, I reckon about there, because you can run this over here and up into there. 
go into the pump, into the filtration. I think that'll work. I'm just going to use some concrete screws here. So 10 mil and just some square washers just in the corners. Hold it down. So I don't know if it's the case, but this is 32 MPA concrete, same as what we put in the house. Uh, so I got the concreters just to come over and do this uh, when they were doing the slabs, pretty hard. All right, so I've made the door up. All the hinge placement and everything is all pre-drilled. So there's a couple of little holes there. So it's really easy to go together. There's no sort of guesswork with it. I could hang it, swing it either way. I'm gonna have it so it swings back this way, mainly because that'll be a sort of bit of a walkway down there eventually. And I don't wanna swing it out into the walkway. Get a screw ready. One on the top and I'll put another one in the bottom. Just hold it in place. Just check it all. Perfect. So let's put the other two screws in. I'll put a latch on the back here somewhere so, it, uh, so I can latch it back when we're working inside it. I've got the latch on here, so I'll just put the, the catch side on there. I'll hold it nice and firm there. I might pre-drill this, these screws are a bit soft. All right, so there we have the shed pretty much complete. I'll go around and seal around the inside of it. Um, just to stop any water getting underneath. I'll put a latch on the back of the door just to, so we can latch it back if we're working inside it. And that's pretty much it. So the uh, the pump and the filter will go in on the weekend. We've got a tap that's around the other side of the shed there so we'll at least have, uh, for the first time, clean running water on the farm. So, how you going guys? Doing a bit more work on the pump shed today. So I've uh, been doing a bit this morning, getting it ready. So I did seal around the inside of the uh, shed, just with some Sikaflex. I've also made up, I don't know if you can see in there, but I've made started making the stand for the water filtration system. So it's about 890 mil, so say 900 mil wide. So I've used some old sleepers, because again, that's what I've got lying around. We've put some stain on that we had sitting here as well, just to help protect the wood and make it look a bit better. Then I'll be putting some form ply on the back of that, and that's what the filtration system will be mounted to. So. In front of this, and I'm not going to bolt it down yet, but I'll put another sleeper that I've cut that I'll put the, the pump on there. I'm using a, a Grunfoss Scala 2 pump, so Plumber will come and hook this up. We'll get this, this frame here mounted. I'm just going to centre this frame in the shed here. Now, I'm going to raise it up a fair bit. Main reason being I need some space at the bottom to be able to get the, the filters out, so the filters are about I think they're 20 inches. I'm gonna raise up a fair bit so I'm not sort of crouching down too much, working over the pump and all the rest of it. So it will be sitting up, sort of the top will be around about, you know, this level here. So it'll be a bit easier to work with. But I will center this in the shed. So I'm happy with where that's sitting. So that gives you a better idea. So it's just a couple of sleepers. They are a little bit warped, but it's not a major issue. So I'll put a couple of uh, screws down into the concrete just to hold it all down. So it's just three bits of sleeper that are bolted through on each side all the way through. Be dyna bolted down to the concrete and then 
we'll put the form ply at the top there. So there'll be a bit of a gap at the bottom and it'll sit up probably about halfway to where these screw screws are sticking out, if you can see those. And then the pump will sit on another bit of uh, sleeper that I've cut. Down the front here somewhere, I'm not too sure, I'll speak to the plumber and see where he wants to put it first, and then I'll bolt it down. Just clean up the cement dust. locate these holes. Okay, there's one there. So just using the screws, concrete screws. So that's fixed into place. We're getting the pump and the filtration system installed today. We're using a Grunfoss, it's a Scala 2 uh, pump. This is a constant pressure pump. So uh, what that means is if I turn the tap on, it'll start ramping up. Doesn't have a, like a pressure vessel on it as such, uh, but it will ramp up the engine speed. If you turn another tap on, it'll speed up a bit more and it'll keep speeding up. So I can go up to 120 liters a minute, which will be plenty for what we're doing. But remembering it'll feed the house eventually. We have had a tap put on the other side of the shed here. So we'll be able to get uh, fresh, clean drinking water as soon as this is installed. Grunfoss Scala 2, it's got good reviews. Yeah, and we got it at a good price. We got quite a significant discount we bought online from an Australian company. So looking forward to getting that in. Uh, I went into a couple of different shops and had a look at them and they had them set up so you could test them out. And yeah, I was, I was impressed with them. I think the early ones from what I was told, um, there was a few warranty issues with the early models of these, uh, but they seem to have sorted it out now. And I'll show you a bit more on this stuff once we get it installed as well. Filtration system is the PureTech uh, Hybrid R11. As I mentioned, there's a, it's a three-stage filtration and then it's got the the ozone filter as well. So that'll kill the bacteria or anything like that that sort of makes it through the filters. I'll also be putting an inline uh, filter from the tank into here as well, just to catch any of that larger stuff. There shouldn't be much because there's a filter going into the top of the tank, just a, a mesh filter. And then we'll do a mesh filter inline going through to this. So just to help capture any of that larger sediment that's in there, if there is any, especially once the tank gets down low, we might get some but hopefully we don't get to that stage these are the two systems we're using this system here the filter system will go on that frame that i showed you yesterday i've just thrown some white paint on the on the backing board so try and get that dry before the plumber gets here and i'll get that mounted and try and get this mounted as well before he gets here so we can just come in and plumb them in that's where we're at so far hey going guys so i just want to give you an update uh, this morning on the pump shed i know i've, I've showed you uh, the start of this process before the plumber came out what we've done is we we got this little shed so we wanted to house the pump and the filter and everything in there here's the the large water tank here so 108,000 liter water tank what we've got down to my right is there's a barrel filter so it's an inline filter that'll just filter out any of the larger particles or anything like that before it gets to our filtration system in here so it'll just help keep that a bit clearer that runs along there underground over to here and then it goes up and it splits and i'll bring you over and show you in a minute but it splits i've got a small pump out the side here that will take water before it goes through the filter so if i want to use it around the yard or whatever then it goes into the shed it's got our grunfoss pump in here then that pushes it through the filtration system and i'll just bring you over and show you that okay so here's our small pump now i've just got a temporary housing on there at the moment just to cover it from water i bought this a while back just to use around the place here so it is a 240 volt pump it's got a pressure switch and everything there so it doesn't need the tank i'll hook this up so i've got a tap on here i'll probably put a post in here 
uh, and I can just use that around the place, you know, if I want to water animals or whatever, if we've got an excess of water. So basically it's not, yeah, it hasn't got the water going through the system. I have got it isolated down here, so there's a tap there that will stop pressure going through to there. That's the low pressure side, so coming straight from the water uh, tank through to this pump. So cover that one back up and I'll show you the, the one in here. We've also got, uh, I'm not sure if you saw it, but behind there I've got a, a line going through and it goes underground along the back of the shed. So I've got a tap on the other side of the shed and that is filtered water. So the idea is down the track, I'll, uh, I may put a, a basin or something inside the shed. Uh, we just thought we'd put that in while we were getting it done. So here's the, the pump set up. We've got the Grunfoss pump, the Scala 2 pump down the bottom there, uh, and the filtration system at the top here. Uh, what we've got is the three particle filters and then the UV lamp on the other side. The UV lamp kills the bacteria and that type of thing in there. I've got some power points put in here. So the electrician ran electricity from the shed over. So we've got metal conduit, it's about 200 mil. Uh, between the shed and this little pump shed. So we've got metal conduit coming over and we've got the two double power points there. Uh, what I'll be doing down the track as well is mounting the fence energizer in here as well and I'll run it underground over the fence which is about 13 meters maybe uh, from the pump shed here. So that'll be all sort of encased in here and all protected then. I'll just quickly show you how it works. Water comes out of the tank, goes underground in here into the shed We'll branch off around to this pump and I can hook something up to that one. So I will uh, run this cord into the into there. I'll put some grommets and that type of thing. So once it comes into the shed, so it comes in down the bottom, into the pump, pump does its thing, goes up over here, then into the filtration system. So it goes through the filters, and then out the other side, down to there and then comes out here and then underground over to where the house will be. What I've done here, these are just, these blocks here are just old sleepers that I had and I put some stain on and some stain we had sitting there. So just an old sleeper, a diner bolted to the concrete and same with the back. So I've just diner bolted, just made up a, a frame and this bit of white board at the back is just some uh, old form ply that I had laying around. And same with this one here, just some old form ply. I will mount the, um, the fence energizer up on here also. So you see there the counter for the filter. So that'll count down back to zero, which is when you're meant to change it. And I'll just record on here the dates they were changed and that sort of thing. I will be making a frame up to go around this, just so if it gets pushed on or someone trips over it or something like that it can't bend and break the the fitting that goes into the tank which would be a disaster um, so yeah i will get something there i'm also going to lag those pipes because we do get really cold and really hard frost here so i will lag these pipes um, i've had pipes freeze here before just hoses and that type of thing so um, i'll get those sorted out so we don't have any issues there i'll just show you the the conduit that we put between the shed so yep just comes over um, we already had electrical in the shed there, going around where the um, where the purlins are, and then it goes across into the shed, metal conduit, and then comes up in there. A metal conduit, he's put the plastic fitting on, and then we've just got the two double power points there. So I will look as well. I'll probably line it with foil board or something like that, especially on this face, which is the sort of uh, faces west. It's all really solid. I'm really happy with the setup here. It's well protected in the shed. So yeah, that should help it all last. Thanks guys. See ya. Thanks for watching today's video. Please share, like, and don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you again next time with 28